Hi guys, my name is Michael Mordensen and I'm the manager of the Mordensen Marriage Agency in Kharkiv, Ukraine. Today is May 8, 2020 and I have amazing guests today, Yulia and Heinrich, uh, met in the Mordensen Agency like many other couples, but their story is like no other story, believe me, and if you watch this video till the end, you will understand why. Yulia Heinrich, thank you so much for coming. I'm so happy to see you. First of all, uh, share a little bit about yourself, where are you from, where you live now, what do you do, and how long you've been married? Okay, well, uh, my name is Heinrich Muller. Uh, I'm a South African citizen. Uh, I work as a business consultant uh, for international companies. Uh, but I, currently, I live with my lovely wife, Yulia, here in, in uh, Kharkov, Ukraine. And I... Uh, fly back to South Africa on a regular basis, maybe every two or three months to go and visit family and friends and, and see my, my mother. <clears throat> but in general, general at, at, at this stage in our lives, we're, we're basically based in, in, in Kharkov and, and we're happy. You, a couple of words about yourself. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, so my name is Yulia. I live in Kharkov, Ukraine. I'm working as a QA engineer in big IT company. Uh, so I came to Mordensen uh, hoping to meet my uh, soulmate and I am very happy that finally this happened. I'm very, awesome. I'm very happy for you and for Heinrich of course too. Uh, guys, how long have you been married already? Well, it, at the end of this year it will be three years. Yes. Perfect. Uh, Heinrich, what, uh, how did you come up with this idea of looking for love abroad? <laughs> uh, South Africa and Kharkov is not uh, really close. Yeah. Yes, um, <clears throat> well I used to be married uh, previously in my life and uh, I was divorced at some stage and uh, I think like any normal guy that goes through a radical divorce, you know, he does some soul searching and tries to understand you know, what happened in his life and, and uh, try, tries to get some more information regarding this. And I started reading a lot and doing some soul searching and um, I started doing a lot of research uh, on the internet and I quickly realized that there is a lot of um, pitfalls in this whole environment of you know trying to use a, a dating agency or a marriage agency to find a, a, a prospective spouse and um, I was very very weary and scared of just using any any agency there was a lot of bad publicity and news published about many of the agencies <clears throat> and I did not know how to go about this and um, I uh, discovered that there was a young lady in Kiev um, who was a blogger about Ukraine and she wrote the most amazing uh, blogs about Ukraine, life in Ukraine, the culture and so on. It was extremely interesting and I just wanted, wrote her an email and said, look, <clears throat> this is my mission in life, I want to find a Ukrainian wife, how do I do this? And I explained to her exactly you know, my background and, and um, I told her that I most probably would want to use a a marriage agency but I just don't know how to do this and which one to choose and it just so happened that she did an interview with you mm -hmm. I think the week or two prior mm -hmm. and she said you know I'm gonna post a video on my site just hang on go and look at the video and, and she, she said I suggested you use Michael Mordensen so she she did a lot of research in terms of dating agencies in Ukraine and according to her that you know she was she, she was the uh, of the opinion that that your agency was um, very transparent. There was nothing, nothing weird or strange going on, and that you were extremely helpful. And and so that's what I did. I contacted you, and now seven years later, whatever, five years later, I'm sitting here. Perfect. You. What about you? Uh, how did you come up with the idea of looking for a man abroad, and uh, why did you come to the Mortensen Agency? Uh, so, in my opinion, I wanted to build a strong family with. Uh, nice loving uh, relationship and uh, in my opinion uh, it's very difficult to find Ukrainian men uh, that uh, will be dedicated to family, that will want uh, to build a strong family so I decided to try uh, maybe somewhere out there there is another man that would like to build a family with me so I came to your agency. <laughs> I'm very glad you did. Uh... <laughs> You mentioned that uh, we were recommended to you, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that uh, even after that happened and you found out about Mordensen Agency, it took you some time yeah. to actually make up your mind. Yeah. Uh, if you can recall, uh, what 
convinced you to become our client? Why did you decide to become our client? Um, it's, <clears throat> so, I remember that I contacted you and, and um, before I made any decision, you and I had lots of correspondence. I, it, this was a long time ago, but it's very clear in my, my mind. And I remember I asked you many, many questions and you would always respond. And, and the most amazing thing is that Michael would respond even over weekends. And I, I would clearly remember that Saturday evenings or Sunday evenings, I would sit and formulate these questions and I would mail it to you, let's say one o'clock in the morning. And that I would, with the idea that tomorrow morning, this man will reply, but half an hour later, he would send back <laughs> a reply. And I was thinking, holy smoke, this guy is so dedicated. <clears throat> and, um, and then, um, uh, it, that's just the, the way that Michael handles his business and uh, just the general way of treating a prospective client is just, it's just, I don't know, it's very hands-on um, and I just got the idea that y you are on the lookout for best for the client and that is what uh, triggered my, my final decision to say, hey, okay, let's, let's do this. Awesome. Uh, okay, so now we're at the point where you're both uh, in the Mordensen agency. Uh, what was your communication like before you met in person? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you feel that this communication, that time that you devoted to talking to each other, uh, helped your relationship? Okay. That's a question definitely mm -hmm. for both of you. That's actually a very good question. Um, so initially we wrote letters to each other uh, for approximately uh, two months and then we Skyped for approximately mm -hmm. two months um, and by the end of the second month of Skyping I knew that I had to meet this lady. I was absolutely besotted with her. She was <laughs> incredible. And um, so, uh, and the question was how, how did this communication influence the whole um, relationship? Yeah, how it, It's actually incredible because during the first two months when you write letters you get to know a person on a much deeper level than you would normally. <clears throat> um, you know, I've, uh, I have dated several girls in my life uh, when I was younger and <clears throat> uh, but this is the first time where I actually met someone via writing letters first and then Skyping and um, so you get to know the soul of the person before you actually meet the person and for me that was actually quite an, an astonishing experience and uh, I did not uh, realize that, you know, that it could be so powerful. <clears throat> uh, and this is something that's stuck in my mind up until today, it, it, till today, you know, if I talk to people about how Yuli and I met this one, I, I always mention this aspect of the letter writing was incredible because I, I got to know Yuli on a, on, on a very, very deep level <clears throat> before I even met her and that was just radical. So for me it was a very, very positive experience. Yuli, what was it like for you when you started talking with Heinrich and this process? Do you feel it helped your relationship? Uh, yes, it, uh, it helped a lot. So in my opinion, uh, also it helps to know a person in more deep, uh, deeper level. And I think uh, this level can be achieved via emails much faster than even in person. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember also writing uh, long emails, spending hours on weekend to reply, uh, but it is uh, worth it. 100%. Okay, now uh, you have uh, you had two months of uh, emailing to each other, you had some Skype calls, personal meeting. Heinrich, what was it like when you first came to Ukraine? That was your first time ever in Ukraine. You've never... First time ever in Eastern Europe. Yeah. In, in Eastern Europe. <laughs> when, when was it? This was, I will never forget, it's the 19th of January 2016. It's, it's etched into my brain. I will never forget it. What was it like when you first came to Ukraine? How, what was the <laughs> sensation? Well, when I arrived, it was night time and, and you came and fetched me at the airport. Um, there was snow everywhere and it was, I believe it was approximately minus 12 degrees. <laughs> it was a total shock to my system because I came from South Africa where it was summer. You know, so I went from 35 degrees to minus 16. Um, and I, I remember that my, the clothing that I brought was not warm enough. You even took me the next morning to go and buy some extra warm clothing. No, I didn't want you to, <laughs> to, to become an icicle, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So this is just one of the other examples of how much uh, Michael puts into the whole process of caring for his, his clients. It's just incredible. This man goes the extra mile easily. Um, so yes, it was a total shock to my system. When I arrived at the airport, you know, e everything looks different. The people look different. Uh, in, the environment is different. Uh, it, just everything is different. Um, what was your first meeting with Yulia like? How, 
Oh, yeah. man, that was the next morning on the 20th of January. Uh, I think we we planned to meet at 10 o'clock in the morning and and I was waiting outside Morden's and agency at the, on the stairs and there were people walking past left and right and I was standing there, you know, with snow falling. I was wondering, where is this woman, you know, and, and then I saw this incredible blonde <laughs> walking, coming up from the right hand side and I thought, wow, okay, this must be her. And it was, it was Julia, she had, she was, just looked incredible. Um, but, and this is the cool thing, because we have written letters for two months and had Skype for two months, when I met her, I already felt, I felt so comfortable. I felt that I, I knew this person. I actually knew her and I knew her soul. Uh, and this woman's soul shines like a bright light. And uh, I, it, it, I didn't even feel scared. I was just uh, very excited and, and um, felt very, very comfortable immediately. It's beautiful. You, how did you feel uh, when you first met uh, Heinrich? And what was it like for you on your side? And also, uh, how did you understand that he is the one? That this is the Mr. Right for you? Okay, so uh, when I first met him, I was a little bit nervous, but I also think because of emails on Skype, I was uh, much less nervous than I could be. Um, so we spent several days together working in Kharkov, uh, seeing different sites. So during this time, we also got to know each other. And also we went to several trips after that together. And I understood that he is uh, very responsible, very loving, careful, kind, uh, a man with a good sense of humor. So it's uh, basically everything what I wanted and uh, that's how I understood he is the one. Perfect. Uh, Heinrich, this is a question that I must ask you. Uh, since 1999 we've had many clients, but you are the only guy who actually moved to Ukraine and permanently lives here in Kharkov, Ukraine, instead of uh, moving his wife to his country. <laughs> How did this happen? And most importantly, I think the question that is very interesting for everybody who is watching this video, what's it like for a foreigner to live in Ukraine, to live in, in Kharkov, in Ukraine? Okay, so when I started this process, the, the whole idea was obviously to take Yulia to, to <laughs> South Africa <laughs> and that was in my mind. And, um, uh, but every time I came to visit her in Ukraine, I just, this, I, I, some, there's something about Ukraine that's, um, that touches me very deeply. It's, uh, it's, it's, even though it, you know, they, um, it's not a very wealthy country, um, it, 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 there's something about the people here that is incredible. Um, you know, the culture is radically different from South Africa. South Africa is based or, or literally follows Western culture, so it, it follows American lifestyles and trends and so on. Ukraine is very interesting because, um, because of the fact that it was part of the USSR until it's 1992 or 1991. 1991. Um, you know, um, it's as if the, uh, Ukraine was cut off from the rest of the world. And, and it's, uh, it's like a different world. It here, it's, it's, things are very different here from the rest of, of, the, of the world out, outside there and for me it's very interesting. Um, the, the, the history is interesting, the culture is interesting, the architecture is, is, is brilliant and it's radically different from anywhere else that I've been and I've traveled a lot in my life. Um, but the hearts of the people here are, are very different. It's, people here are, um, I don't know, they are they, they touch me deeply somehow and, and this woman especially, she's, she's extremely loving and caring uh, and very family orientated and that's, you know, that's one of the thing, reasons why Ukrainian wives uh, or, or women make such fantastic spouses is, is just the way that they uh, approach family life and, and having a husband and caring for family is just, it's just incredible. So I fell in love with this country, I, um, I think it's an awesome place and um, I've met some awesome people like you here, and you know, and, uh, you. Um, uh, and uh, Yulia's parents are just, they're brilliant. Uh, you know, I've, I've never met a family, and I'm talking about Yulia and her, two, her parents, that, that have so much love between them. It's, it's incredible to see these three people together. Um, for me, that's really special, and, and interestingly enough, you know, when I looked for a spouse, for a, for a wife, I had a tick list of attributes that I wanted and one of the things I wanted was I wanted a wife where I could see this strong love between the, the, the my wife and her parents mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> and in Julia's case, this is, this is incredible. Her parents are the most loving and caring people I've ever met in my life. Her mo you know, her father cannot speak a word English, or maybe one or two words. <laughs> her mother actually started attending English evening classes just to speak English with me. Really? Yeah. And she, she's actually very good at this now. Oh my God. But this woman goes out of her way. She cooks food for me. They invite me every week into their house. So, and they are very, very humble and, and plain people. But, but their hearts are incredible. Um, and I, it's very difficult in South Africa to find a family like this, to see this. Here in Kharkov, I have a family like this that I can see on a regular basis where this love is just, it's just continuously there. And um, so, <clears throat> you know, the other thing is that because I'm a business consultant, I do not have to work in an office. I can be completely remote. So it doesn't matter where I live. You know, sure. I, can, I can sit on a beach under a palm tree and work if I want to. And this enables me to be here if I want to and, 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 uh, uh, and work for uh, companies overseas. And so at this stage, Yulia and I are fairly happy to be here. She's extremely close to her parents. And, um, and for now, we're happy. Uh, we are planning to eventually relocate to South Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm not, not sure. It might, may, may, might be another year or two. I, I'm not sure. It'll happen when, when the time happens, when it happens, and when we feel comfortable. But for now, we, we live here. We're happy. I've got a beautiful family here. Uh, even though I do have family in South Africa, whom I also extremely love. You know, my wife is uh, very important to me. And, and, and uh, so for now, we're here. We're happy. Um, I'm enjoying the, the, the um, Ukrainian culture, the, the nature is extremely beautiful here. Yulia has taken me on several uh, canoeing trips wow. on rivers. It's just the... It, on Seversky Donets? <coughs> uh, on our river? Or is it Kharkiv? No, Seversky Donets and several other rivers. Wow. It's also we went to rafting, <coughs> saw some castles yeah. uh, around Kharkiv, so different So <coughs> It's an incredibly interesting environment to get to know and, and the people here are, are awesome. Um, Heinrich, in the practical sense, mm. uh, when you first came to Ukraine, how many Russian words did you speak? <laughs> Maybe three. Three. How many Russian words do you know now? I probably have a vocabulary of Maybe three or four hundred words. That's um, not bad at all. It's okay. So I can help myself. I have been attending um, some English extra night classes. Uh, there is a lady from a medical university that teaches me. And uh, so that's made a big difference and, and I am at a level where I can sort of help myself and not get myself into trouble too much and mm -hmm. uh, you know I can go to a shop and buy whatever I want and, and uh, now after two years of living here I can actually, I can clearly hear the words that people say and understand mm -hmm. what they're saying. So and, and of course communication with the parents are very important to me. So. In the beginning, it was very funny communicating with her father because there was lots of hand gestures and <laughs> and we used to laugh a lot. It was very funny. Now, at least, you know, I can I can throw a couple of sentences to him and he understands what I'm saying. And so, yeah, it's it's awesome. In terms of uh, safety, uh, you are even though you do have the 300 words and uh, you may not uh, look like a foreigner on the street because uh, uh, Heinrich, since he moved here, he started wearing the type of clothes Ukrainian guys wear and because Heinrich and Yuta actually live uh, just basically two blocks away from our office here and so I actually stumble uh, we run into each other with Heinrich every once in a while so if you just see him on the street you would never tell that he is not a Ukrainian guy but clearly when you start speaking uh, it's easy to understand that you are not from here have you ever had any issues here uh, have you felt unsafe or because you and you said you've, you've traveled uh, what's it like in this regard <clears throat> Ukraine is extremely safe. Uh, look, I come from South Africa, and in South Africa uh, I grew up with a mindset of always being very wary of where you are, what you do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in South Africa I'm used to the fact that if I go at night somewhere, you look over your shoulder and be careful. Here, there's nothing, none of that. It, this is an incredibly safe country. You have young women going from coffee shops back to their apartments at one o'clock in the morning, walking alone. Literally, almost nothing can happen here. It's it, maybe there will be petty crime here and there that you hear of every once in a while, but in general, it's an extremely, extremely safe country. 
I've never had any issues. Did you know that uh, among all the cities of Ukraine that have more than one million people of population, Kharkov has the lowest crime rate? I'm very happy. Guys, thank you so much for coming. I, I, I mean it from the you know, bottom of my heart. I, I've been dreaming about this video for a long time. Really, really, I really appreciate it. The last thing that I want to uh, ask you to do, uh, addressing guys who will be watching this video, single guys out there who are thinking about looking for their love uh, in Ukraine. What would be your advice? What would be uh, the words that you want to say to them? I, you know, this, um, there's, a, there's an English uh, uh, saying that says, fortune favors the brave. Uh, and uh, if you're really looking for someone that is special and uh, you want someone in your life that's extremely loving and caring um, and that will be devoted to you and focused on you and your family and, and just wants to have a, a strong, build a strong family, then, then definitely I would say Ukraine is the place to look for, for a lady. Um, <clears throat> Michael uh, and his brother, um, you know, this is a family run uh, uh, business that they have. It's a small business, but they take an immense amount of time and passion and care in terms of uh, making sure that the correct ladies are uh, part of this program. And, and uh, I know Michael also, um, you know, if a prospective guy is interested in joining, Michael will do some, you know, some vetting to make sure that, you know, is this guy, uh, you know, does he understand w what this will entail? Um, this can be a, you know, it's a diff there are slight, some slight difficulties. The one is you've got to come and travel and, and meet the lady and maybe come back two or three times more. Um, so there's some traveling involved. You have to be patient. Some of the girls uh, are not very fluent in English, but, uh, you know, I've seen these girls uh, learn English within six months to a year. They, once they meet a guy that they feel uh, you know, is their man, they will do anything. And these girls are bright, they're hardworking, they're very focused. Um, I think Ukraine is an incredible place to find a, find a wife. And uh, Michael and, and his, his uh, uh, agency is incredible. Thank you, you know, so much. You have, uh, you have supported and helped me so many times uh, through this process. Yeah, it's I, a I will, pleasure. I will never forget. And, yeah. and I've, I've have this fantastic woman in my life. I'm extremely happy. You know, she makes me smile every week. It's, and, and, and it's just, she's just an incredible person. So uh, if it wasn't for you, you know, I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have this lovely woman in my life. And no, I'm very happy you found us. Yul, uh, addressing to the guys, what would you say uh, how to win a heart of a girl like you? Uh, how to be successful in a search for a wife in Ukraine? Uh, so I would suggest them uh, not to be scared to lie, write lots of emails, uh, Skype a lot, not to be scared to arrive here and spend time uh, with a girl as much as possible and uh, don't be scared to spend time together no matter if it is in Ukraine or abroad and uh, if you work hard on your relationship you will get a result. It's true. Guys, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I'm sure you felt uh, the way I feel right now. Uh, I'm so pleased. Uh, I feel so warm in my heart to see you. And uh, thank you so much again for it's coming over. Uh, and I, from the bottom of my heart, I wish you many, many, many years of happy life. Whether you will, stay, you will stay in Kharkov or you will move back to South Africa, it doesn't matter. You are always in my heart. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you Michael. Guys, thank you for watching. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Bye-bye.